today, these day, let me hit ya, hit ya with that holy scripture so that you can see that these are they. I realize you're going through a lot of stuff that you should not go through, but guess what you have to go through? Because you must be a part of what God has called the These Are They Squad. Check it out. These are they. These are they, these are they, let me hit ya, hit ya with that holy scripture so that you can see that these are they. That keep the Ten Commandments of the G to the O to the D. Found in Exodus chapter 21 through 17. Yes, these are they that have the faith of Jesus Christ's truth. So flip the B to the I to the B to the L to the E. The text be Revelations 14, verse 3, 12. And we will discover that these are they that have the patience of the saints. Run the race, keep the pace, never, ever, ever make haste. Cause these are they that will not see death hey face to face they will see the jc on their glorious day man i can't wait i hope to see that you'll be in the place yo it's by his g to the r to the a to the c to the e everybody say we see that will be these are they please these are they that keep the commandments of yahweh yahweh and these are they they wash their robes in the blood but is a lamb so these must be they that came out of great trials and tribs and so not death but endure to the second coming of JC these are they these are they that stood on the mount of Zion next to the lamb of Yahweh cause these are they these are they that have their father's name uh -huh. written in their foreheads and he will return with me cause these are they these are they that was not corrupted by immorality yes these are they these are they that worship on the seventh day sabbath as the true Lord's day in spite of mad persecution and controversy these are they these are they that remain sounded in virgins for Christ's name's sake and these are they, these are they whose mouth is clean, no call at all because these are they, these are they redeemed from among all men being the first fruit unto the G-O-D and the Lamb, these are they, these are they that overcame by the only begotten blood and their own testimony that's the reason so we say these are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh, Yahweh, and these are they, they wash their robes in the blood of the slain, but this a lamb so these must be they, that came out of great trials and trips and so not death, but endure to the second coming of J.C. No, these are they, uh -huh. these are they. I'm out on this track, check it out, check it out. Finally, these are they that will say on that glorious day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. Now he will save us. These are they, these are they that sang the new song before God's majesty. It's the song of Moses and the Lamb. Nobody else had dibs to sing this special jam. Not even the elders nor the four beasts. Even the holy seraphim and the seraphims had to be ceased. Silent be. Only they, aka 144,000 redeemed from the earth at the second coming of JC. I pray that you will be on that great day and you can say with me, because these are they, these are they that stood before the throne of Almighty without any spot or wrinkle, man. Because blood wash, white robes, you understand it. Because if you're not a part of these, then you're going to be lost. Say, these are they that keep the So these must be they that came out of great trials and trips and so not death, but endure to the second coming of JC. No, these are they.
but I sure know a homie. With his blood in the streets, street. and you remain quiet, don't you come with his speech. When it pop, man down, done by police, hood cries. You ignore it, don't say nothing to me. When it pop, when it pop the hood been crying out, but no one ever hears. Yeah, until they turn it upside down. Now everyone is pissed. Uh. Yeah. I bring up Trayvon, you say he was a thug. I bring up John Crawford, you say he had a gun. I bring up Eric Garner, you say he was overweight. And you say that Michael Brown should have never tried to run. Do you really not realize that it's a pattern that you not having compassion when these tragedies happen? Isn't it odd? Usually you sympathize with the victim, but this time you just continue to side with the killer. Could it be a part of the lie? Yeah, we love the genocide. Yo, the hood got a record that none of us can deny. Some are killers and others pick it up just to survive. You think you would be as holy if you grew up on his side? No excuses, nah. but you gon' have to tweak your perspective. It's easy being sheep with them sheep to protect it. Get around the wolves and them teeth start projecting. Second that you sleep, you can leave unexpected. Check it. When it's blood in the streets, and you remain quiet, don't you come with a speech. When it pop, man down, done by police, hood cries. You ignore it, don't say nothing to me. When it pop, the hood been crying out, but no one ever hears. Yeah, until they turn it upside down. Now everyone appears. Yeah. Uh. You're looking mad negligent on top of your theology. Your blind spots evident. Hear me quoting Jakes and you yell out of your heretic. But when the hood cries, I'm a god that ain't addressing it. You don't like Sharpton? Who you gonna replace him with? If you don't never pick up when they call you, say the jit. Want me to be quiet? Uh, you gon' have to make me there. Cause every time I tell the hood something, you okay with it. Isaiah 117 in your Bible. Most of them people won't look anything like you. Fatherless, oppressed. And the widow, I remind you Take a look around you Who does that apply to? Why would the Lord tell you to plead their case? That's he expected you to ignore the things they say Like man, the system is treated And the police beat us But you don't never believe us Why would I trust your Jesus? Don't you say you love me, show me, homie blood in the streets And you remain quiet Don't you come with a speech When it pop, man down Done by police, hood cries You ignore it, don't say nothing to me When it pop, uh welcome welcome to the session bible beats and bars you already know your host minister fred too don't call me junior that's not how it goes listen we are super excited glad that you are are able to hang out with us join us uh do me a favor do yourself a favor do your friends and family a favor and share this YouTube channel. No more dirty INC or Facebook page. You know, there's tons of places you can get it. But we're really glad that you got a chance to make it. Man, it's gotten cool outside. So I was like, okay, we got to pull up the, pull the dolos, man. It's real crucial here. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get in. I got to flip the script. Man, I'm excited. We got some dope music videos. Uh, some artists that we met, some artists that have uh, actually just submitted. Uh, and um, be on the lookout. We got some really amazing things coming up with the No More Dirty uh, radio show and TV show. And don't forget, that's every Friday, the No More Dirty TV show, 7.30 Central Standard Time. All right, so let me go ahead and drop this one on you, man. We are talking, we, you know, the series is You Got This. You Got This. Here's how and why. So this is part two. Yo, you already know. We're going to recap first, get in. I'm going to give you like eh, about four or five points, and hopefully it will encourage you as it has encouraged us here at the spot where lives transform. Now, if you want to come and hang out with us, we have a live studio audience here. So you're welcome to do that. 5045 North Memorial Parkway. Just go down Parkway, pass up Alabama A&M, and bam, we're two doors down in the plaza next to uh, Bojangles. So there you go. That's a telltale sign. All right, so check it. I'm going to hit you with Jeremiah 31. Um, we're going to do one through three, but I'm going to just do three right now. And it said, this is what Yahshua, this is what the Lord said. It said, listen, he appeared to you and I. And now he did this with Jeremiah. But let's just imagine you sitting on the bank, right? You catch it all kind of troubles, right? You, you just like, yo, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Um, Lord, how long do I have to not have? So we're going to talk about this thing about lack and how to get it back, right? 
So the Lord says to him, so Yahshua said, hey, man, listen. You have to understand that I really love you. I know you're going through something, but I really need you to understand that my love is not just for the moment. And Jeremiah is like, I'm not getting it. What do you mean? Everybody says they love me. Man, you were with us a long time. You got us through Egypt. You got us across the Red Sea. You got us in Canaan land. Then you got us across the Jordan. Now you told us to take over everything. And now we in a situation where we are captive. We're slaves. And it's not making any sense to Jeremiah. Just like sometimes it doesn't make sense why we are going through so much hardship. So Jesus says to him, he says, listen, again, I'm explaining. But I love you. And not only do I love you just in the moment, but I love you ever with an everlasting love. Therefore, with my loving kindness, have I drawn you to me. And I was like, okay, so what do you mean? How does that work? Like that is, that's bananas to me that, that this is what's happening. So we're going to dig in with this thing. I, wanna, I want us to go right in. We're going to give you a music video. Let's see. Nah, let's do. Let's do this because I really want you to get the vibe. So I want to say again, thanks for joining us. We're going to go right into our video presentation because we do this every week. Um, and this is really deep. This one they sent us this week is super deep. Um, I don't know how many people are, are dealing with some issues and as it relates to drugs, abuse, addiction. But we are so grateful to be a part of the collaborative efforts. Uh, with the Foundation for Drug-Free World. And so I want you guys to check out this. We're going to come back. I'm going to give you some tips, too, because somebody hit us up this week and was like, hey, listen, like, what if you don't celebrate the Halloween holiday? What do you do? And I said, okay, that's cool. I got some for you on this next session. So that is today. So check it out. We're going to go, huh? So we're going to go right into this one here. Check out this video. I think you'll be blessed by it. Um, and then we'll be right back with the other additional information. All right, you're listening to The Bible, Beats and Bars, the session. Your boy, Minister Fred, too. Check it. OCs, Smurfs, Smurfs, 80s, Big Boys, Dollar Bill, Green Goblin, Painkillers. It makes your life a hell on earth eventually. Painkillers are derived from opium. They're used for medical purposes. They're a manufactured substance. They're like a synthetic heroin. It's basically as powerful as heroin, and it will affect your nervous system in the same way. It's a, it's a pharmaceutical. It's sold over the counter as a painkiller. It's mostly given to like cancer patients and stuff, and like people who have back surgeries. You know, mainly used for people who are terminally ill to block off your pain receptors. Normally, you get them through a doctor. You can also buy them on the streets. It comes in either liquid, like the cough medicine, tablets, or capsules. With the fentanyl, you know, those actually come in a, a box of what we call the lollipops, because they actually look kind of like lollipops with a little thing at the end of the stick. It looks like you're just eating a lollipop. Some of the painkillers are like Oxycontin, Hydrocodone, Lorotabs, Percocets, Vicodin. There's like different milligram forms. It starts out, I think you can get like 10 milligram pills, 20s, 40s, 80s, and then there's like 160s that are hard to come by. I just took it in pill form. You could take it orally. Just get a straw and just snort it. I used to crush it up and snort it. I progressed to breaking it down into liquid form using a syringe tying my arms up and shooting myself up with it. When I first tried it, I was 16 years old. I was probably 18. I was 21. I started painkillers at about 28. It was hydrocodone, a prescription painkiller. I'd first gotten it prescribed to me from a doctor. I was on prescription pain medication from my doctor and therapist for a long time, and then I just bought it off the street after that. I, I took the pain pills from a car accident. Had some medical issues that developed because of playing sports, and he prescribed me Lortab and Somas. Took it for a leg injury. I just thought that it was experimental and I thought it would be cool to try. It's in the ninth grade in class, my buddy gave me an Oxycontin. 
a group of friends in high school. It was a cool thing to do at the time. A friend of mine so told me about pain pills and how they made you feel. And I knew they were in the medicine cabinet. So that's when I went looking. And then I tried to stop, but it was just way too addictive. And I got really sick when I stopped. So I just kept going with it. One thing led to another. And before you know it, you're hooked. I had no idea they were addictive till the morning I woke up and I was freaking out because I didn't have anything. It clicked in my head that, oh my gosh, this is the physical addiction to it. I'm going through drug withdrawal. It's a pain medication. It takes away your pain. But yet when the medication's gone, you just get all that pain back, whether it be emotionally or physically. It just all comes back tenfold. You start to crave it. You start to need more. Within a week or two, I was taking them morning, afternoon, and night, and needed them to function. All of a sudden, after you look at it, you're spending like 300 some odd dollars a day just to get by. You start feeling these awful withdrawal symptoms where you get terribly sick, hot and cold sweats. I would vomit and vomit and vomit for days on end. Don't want to eat, like forcing myself to eat because I knew I had to. It feels like something's coming out of the bones of your body and trying to break out of your skin. It felt like someone was just like, shoving knives into my bones. It's like the most horrible thing that you'd ever experienced, just feeling like you just got beat up. In your mind, you're completely panicked. You're freaked out. You can't hold a train of thought at all. You can't function. I wasn't even looking for the high anymore. I was just looking to get that feeling gone. It was, I felt like dying. All you're doing is, is taking it just so that you're not sick. You feel like you'll do anything to get it. Nine times out of 10, you will. I had a choice to walk out a door and leave my life and my house and my wife or stay and try and make things work and quit drugs. But I walked out that door. I just packed up my things and I left my kids with my parents. I left my family. I didn't tell them where I was going. And I went and stayed with a friend in this rundown hotel full of drug dealers and prostitutes. I was kicked out of my house three separate times. I couldn't believe that it had happened to me. Like for me to be homeless, sweaty, hungry, smelly. I was filling out fake prescriptions. You actually forged the doctor's signature. Next thing you know, a few months later, I was being arrested for fraud and forgery. At 20, I was in federal prison for 20 months. And uh, federal prison is no place for anybody to be at 20 years old. I ran into the back of two cars. I pulled out of a parking lot, not looking, the car hit me. And then I pulled into a parking lot in my apartment complex and just totally crashed another car. I didn't even see it when I pulled into it. I wasn't worrying about like where I was gonna go the next day, where I was gonna sleep. It was just all about getting high. And that was where my focus was. So I didn't have to face reality. So I didn't have to like look around me and see needles and spoons and blood all over me from, from shooting up. My daughter seen me passed out on the floor and not being able to wake me up, thinking that I was dead. Woke up three days later, covered in my own feces and vomit to my parents rushing me to the hospital. I OD'd. I just woke up on the floor with some huge man, I didn't even know who he was, standing on top of me, hitting me on the chest, telling me to breathe. I woke up in the hospital with a tube down my throat. I was handcuffed to the bed, and I'm thinking to myself, what am I doing here? My dad had come to visit me. It's the first time I ever saw him cry. And that's when it really hit me, is not only what am I doing to myself, what am I doing to my family? Destroyed my family. I mean, they, they love me and their family, and blood is thicker than water, but they can only take so much. They ripped my parents up. Like, they didn't, some nights I'd stay out and not call. They didn't know where I was at. I wouldn't accept their phone calls. I wouldn't go to Christmas. I wouldn't go to birthdays. I wouldn't go to family dinners. And I turned into someone who just had no emotion. That was just almost seemed like they're dead all the time. At first, it's like, it's, it's okay to do. It's from a doctor. It's safe. No one told me that it was really addictive. No one told me about the side effects. No one told me anything. They just said, this will take away your pain. They're little, small, round, colorful pills that look so harmless when really it's just a death sentence. It sucks. It's when you're doing it, sometimes it feels good because you got a couple laughs with some close friends, but those laughs turn to tears very quickly. You lose track of your dreams and your goals, things that you wanted to accomplish and you want to do in your life. The only thing that's important is the drug, and then before you know it, you wake up 10 years later and you see all the time that you've wasted. It's definitely not worth it. It's only going to take you down. It's never going to take you up.
this thing and this is the location, the spot. So this is where you can come if you ever say, hey, I need to talk to somebody. Throw that back up one more time for me, Professor. Um, it's important for you to realize that there are places and there are people that can really support you and really want to see you better. So we are located. This is the location for the spot where lives transform. And this is where we do a lot of outreach, a lot of inreach, and a lot of support services here as well. So um, I want to do this real quick before we go to our, the, the video presentation before we talk and share. Um, there are a lot of you right that are, we've gotten a lot of re, a lot of positive response saying, hey, Minister Fred, I didn't realize how many of people in my family are impacted by substance abuse, overdose, DUI, uh, the whole nine. And I said, well, you know, the truth is it could happen to anybody. And it usually does if we make some unhealthy choices or if we get around the wrong peers. Um, so I want to share a couple resources with you here in our local area that is here in the Huntsville, Madison County, North Alabama area. We have an organization called the Crisis Services of North Alabama. If you ever have a question, hear me, hear me well. If you ever have a question and you're like, where do I go for this particular resource? Where can I take my child who's having seizures? What organizations deal with these particular intervention programs? I want you to just dial on your cell phone. Two, one, one, and then hit talk. Crisis services is going to pick up. They're going to say, how can I help you? Crisis services. What's your zip code? Three, five, eight, whatever it is. Three, five, seven, whatever it is. The reason for that is so that they can try and get you the best resources based upon your need or your question. So you will call them. They'll, they're, now, what I love about them is that they're non-judgmental. They're very objective in even how they approach a question or reserve, give you an answer. Second thing I want you to do is I want you to look up, and um, uh, Professor, I want you to put up the website for a foundation for drug-free world. I think it's important. There are organizations. Well, I actually spoke with two ministers, two ministries, and two pastors this week. Said, "Hey, man, I'd like to get some of that information. Did you know it's free? Maybe you need it for your school. Maybe you want to use it and say, I want to partner with No More Dirty, and we want to do a support service for parents of our kids in the school system: elementary, middle school, high school, even college, universities level. So I want you to make sure that it's on the screen." It's a foundation for a drug-free world. I want you to take the time to peruse. They have literature. They have campaigns. Um, when, we did the, the, when we did the festival here um, on September the 12th, previously a, few, a month or so ago back, uh, they've provided all these different pieces of information. If you need any of this information, it is available. So I just want to make sure that you have access to these things. And I think it's just important. Um, we don't have a monopoly on this. The monopoly is be seeing people restored. So at drugfreeworld.org, you already know the business, and then also Crisis Services of North Alabama. Now, let me say this. There are a lot of people that listen from outside uh, our region. The Crisis Service number 211 talk is across the nation. Every city, every county, everyone has one. Everyone has a crisis service intervention hotline. Dial that number, lock it in your phone. It's in my phone, 211. And, it, and I got it saved, crisis services. Put that in your phone. And then again, I want to say to you, if there's something going on in your life, you know you can also reach us here at nomoredirty.org or you can get at us on our telephone number and our email, info at nomoredirty.org. So I just wanted to make sure you got that information. One more thing I want to provide. If you need any, if you have someone, I want to give you this thing. I always do this every week. Shout out to Wellstone. Inc. They have a, a, a deactivation drug kit. Now, let me tell you something. This is super, super dope. Super dope. Let me tell you why it's dope. I'm going to show you what's inside. Here's what's inside. It's a, it's a little mini deactivating drug kit. So what you do is you put whatever it is you're struggling with, right? 
put it inside this bag right here. Boom. It may be some of that Mary Jane. It might be some prescription peel. It might be some old peels. It might be whatever. You put it in there, right? Might be the different color peels. We want to go into details. Then there's a big, this little blue cap, this little bag. It's, it looks like black salt, and it looks like that. You put it in there. Pour a little water in there, about two to four ounces, just enough so it gets about here. You zip it up tight and then you shake it and guess what it dissolves whatever drugs or whatever paraphernalia is in there even cigars cigarettes anything it's biodegradable and then you take this and you throw it in a trash can and when the guy comes by and picks it up it's gone guess what it's free if you would like some of these packets or you like for us to connect you with the individual organization that can help you we'd love to do that so again we have some here obviously we keep them on stock but if you really do want some for your organization, your church, think about it. Now, what, what kind of outreach would that be, right? You pull up to a neighborhood. Now, that's a, good, that's a good holiday treat, bro, for Halloween. This is a great Halloween alternative. I think we might do that tomorrow. When we out and people are like, Sam, man, trick or treat, we're going to hit them up with one of these. Here, put the one of these in your bag. Yeah, no problem. And then they're going to be like, what's that? I said, well, if you have a parent that's struggling with some drugs or alcohol, cigarettes, put it in here. And they're going to be like, okay, cool. Thank you. Bam. There it is. There it is. There it is. All right. So I want to just make sure you had that information. Don't forget to sanitize. We're still in the COVID-19 post side. Well, we're on, hopefully we're getting better in this thing. And make sure you have um, done what you need to do to stay safe. Hey, man, throw some music on. I want to give them a few tips on some alternatives. So. I had some people said, hey, man, we, we, we need some alternatives for, for us families that don't necessarily or do not celebrate, you know, the Halloween holiday, right? So I said, okay, let me go do some research. And I did some stuff that we, I do and we do here. And I want to give you nine different things that you can do as alternative, just nine. And you can always get in touch with us. You already know the business all day, every day. So the first thing you can do is you can do a fall carnival. You know, they do fall festivals. Uh, and then instead of doing horror characters, you can do Bible characters and you can do or you can do superheroes. Now, listen, a superhero might be your dad. It might be your mom. A superhero is that person that is super great to you, that has impacted you in a way that is like, yo, man, I love that. Now, then you, if you want to do that, that's one idea. I think the other, oh, this is a good one. You can do a pumpkin patch, um, and then you can put in the pumpkins. You cut. You know how they cut the pumpkins instead of putting the little, the little crazy spiders and all that stuff in there? You can put a little light in there. In a little Bible, or you can put in there a little um, track, or you can put in there uh, just something that's fun. And then, and when they get it, they or you can just do like, for instance, I think two years ago we I did something like that with an organization, and they had pumpkins. Right, they got the pumpkins in, they open it, and it was like a little um, little gift ticket. They took it down, and they were able to get all kind of stuff. Like it was super dope. All right, so then you got this one. Then you could do now. This one's fun. Face painting, uh, Noah's art. In fact, you can do a like. In fact, tomorrow, from three to five, at a uh, first church, Seven Adventist Church, they're doing a petting zoo outside as a ha Halloween alternative. So you can and you can get in touch with my man. He was here with that with the with all the different animals and exotic animals. So you know, do that. The other thing is you can have something out on your on your church parking lot, like we have our our, our plaza parking lot. Uh, you can do something fun like that. You can throw a skating party. That's another one, a cursing or a clean skating hip-hop party. Then you can do a spoken word event. I think next year we're going to do a, a Christian hip-hop party um, during the as a, a Halloween alternative. So I'll keep you posted on that. And then the other thing is you can do a poster contest or you can do a creative writing um, spoken word essay about the beauty of life. Because, you know, Halloween celebrates the dead. So we want to do something opposite of that. So I wanted to give you a few options. I think that'll be great. And then take the time, you know, if you have family and you got, you got all, we have all this technology, 
you can pull some up on Netflix. You can pull something up on on uh, Pure Flix. You can go pull something up. Oh, a Christian movie. They got this new movie out. You know, it's called the Jesus the Jesus Culture Mo- Movement. It's a dope documentary series movie, and it talks about the movement of Christian music and clean music. Really amazing. So there that you have. You have nine things that you can do. If you have any concern, you say, man, I didn't remember that. Hit us up in the chat. Say, listen, give us your email or ask for our email. We'll send you that information. All right. So there it is, bro. You got some alternatives. Make sure you go hang out. There's a lot of churches doing stuff. There's a lot of even the youth centers are doing stuff, which is really dope. I like that. I mean, I think they have something going on everywhere that still represents life and the life giver. So there it is. Alternatives. You got it. I call it solutions to a problem. (laughs) <laughs> All right, so we're going to get this video on, and then we're going to get right in on, yo, you got this. Here's how, and here's where. So check it out. I love this video, man. I love this video. It's by Hogmaw, and they got a dope one, Z- Zadok and his crew, man. I think you're going to be blessed by this. So enjoy the video, and we'll get right in with how we're going to get this done. Because you know what? You got this. You got this. I got this. We all got this. Let's go. Yo. You tuned in to the session Bible Beats and Bars. I mean, I'm telling you, it's going to be super dope. And let me tell you something else while you're getting that queued up. I want you guys to know that we care about you. We appreciate you. Take the time to go visit us on our website, nomoredirty.org. Take the time, man. And uh, if we can be a blessing, allow us to be a blessing. Check this video out. Yeah, let go. Y'all know who we is, man. If you don't know, stay tuned. Bazooka, Seven Deuce, Zeta, H-O-G, M-O-P. You already know the squad, homie. It's the flaw. You know Yahweh is our God, homie. It's the flaw. And we're always on our job, homie. It's the flaw. Jesus really saved us no facade, homie. It's the flaw. I think the most side. I think the most I, but all did he dip in me? I was his enemy. I had some sending me the gates of hell is where he should have been sending me. Take no L's, now I'm walking in victory. Ain't no telling where I would have eventually ended up. Probably in prison, bruh. Stuck in these streets with no purpose of sitting up. There's been some times in my life where I should have been dead, but I'm still here. It isn't love. The whole time the most I was keeping me, ironically, it was him that I didn't trust. I was intrigued, I was deceived, being led by my sin and lust. But Lucifer perceived, the spirit of greed, helped me with a relentless clutch. I don't know about you, but bro, it's the blood for me. He put his love in me, on top, never underneath. I'm the head and not the tail. Hell will freeze before y'all fell. Ironically, I found what true freedom was when I was inside a cell. That's all facts, cut from a different fabric. It ain't nothing fabricated. Give you nothing but real life. Put it cease to your imagination. I just slipped through the cracks to bring peace in the land of Satan where they come through and clap and throw your cap off. No graduation. You already know the squad, homie, it's the mom. You know Yahweh is our God, homie, it's the mom. And we're always on our job, homie, it's the mom. Jesus really saved us the facade, homie, it's the mom. Was in the field with a cheap stripper, with a flea flick, a soft cheek yes. lick at this life froze. Free shiver, hit a deep river till you sleep with I Jeff and Pete was a peach, never seeing all blues like sea pictures. Sundown with run around with a hundred rounds, it's a tree chipper. Pray shop and deep liver, pray walk to the feet blister. Teach scripture, righteously getting green Listen, spiritually I eat liver Jeet hide if we seek wizards We mind, we greet hitters These demons better cut it out, they need scissors Spreading lies with a TV for Open eyes never see before Real lives never need you more Better life need to feed me more Easy score, spirit slide, it's a greasy floor Let it Christ with a squeegee for Broke the spell from a Ouija board we, 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 we outside you in the room stay When it's doomsday, where the tombs lay It's up there with a the moon stay Satan weak, no tool Stay. Yeah. We don't do the perfume spray uh-huh. with the sun. It's noonday. Every year, this June May. Old life cocoons lay. You, you already know the squad, homie. It's the mom. You know Yahweh is our God, homie. It's the mom. And we're always on our job, homie. It's the mom. Jesus, yeah. Save us the facade, homie. It's the mom. I'll move. 
huge weight like bench press and didn't dress to impress. I cop the chain with the brick guests. They push shots to get big chest. Look at my in that thin dress. We lost the after her thickness. Getting rich was our interest. And I turned the block to a big mess. Dudes you used to play little league with turn the ops in these streets. Yes, a lot of uniforms of that heat vest. In a pistol, just trying to beat death. Adolescents and we stress. Paranoid everywhere we step. If you think you want to swim with the sharks before diving in, take a deep breath. At that time, I didn't know a god. And if it's one, do we love the hood? Can he come and change everything? They was Ray Charles, I didn't know no good. Eventually, I met a couple of homies. They sent my questions, they understood. Opened up the Bible, said, read yourself. And they showed me answers straight from the book. That's when my old life had to kick rocks. No longer bagging up zip locks. Became a sheep in his flock. They bust the Bible with flip flops. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back. You already know the session Bible beats and bars of Zadok and the whole crew, man. Uh, Oh man, I love Hog Mog, man. They doing their thing. It's a uh, holiness over the business, man. And you already know they doing God over money. So listen, we're gonna get right in. We talked about, and we're on a second phase of this thing called, man, how do you how can you stand in confidence and say, I got this? How is it that God says to you, you got this? Now, last week we talked and we just kind of we discovered, let me put it that way. We discovered, huh. The reason why we got it, number one, is because of three amazing allies. The first one is God. The devil's greatest number one enemy is God. But if it's God is his number one enemy, he's our ally. Spend some time with him. Number two, the devil's worst second enemy is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. That means that's that little voice that says, hey, Fred, hey, John, hey, you, don't do that. I'd rather you do this. In fact, if you do this, this is going to be the positive outcomes versus the negative, negative consequences of your actions. Three, I like this. The third greatest enemy to the devil is you and I. That's what really got me. And then I was like, okay, so God, how do you figure? You created an angel that was dope. He got kicked out of heaven. He's clowning. He's got it. He's got it up on us. And you still say, we got it. And God is like, for sure. And I'm like, okay, but he said, you got to understand. Number one, the devil can never create. He only imitates. You're my creation. You're my beloved, the best ever created. When he created the male and the female and the he, the she, the they, that was the best thing that God and the whole God family ever created. So hands down, huh? like you're so much better and you got whatever it is that you can get because the devil is an angel that was created lower than us. So he's upset because he can't even he don't have the he don't even have the juice to say, man, I was created in God's image. No, no, you were created being. But you weren't created in God's literal image, likeness being how he thinks created choice. Right. So we got that to our advantage. And then I want to also do this, throw this one out and then we'll get right in. The other reason why I love last week's discovery is because he's saying that anytime we want it. We can get it because, guess what? This is the reason we're here today. Because he always had it. Y'all hear me? God has always been around. And because he's always been around, guess what? We have always had access to being victorious. Come on in. You good? It's dope, man. Like, I was thinking, so I started studying this thing and I started saying, then I, you know, me, I have like everyday conversation. Like we talking, if you pulled up here, like these folks pulling up and walking in, if you pulled up, you'd be like, yeah, man, what's going on, Fred? Blah, 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 blah. That's how I have a conversation with God, right? So I want to do this one. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1 5 says that he, the reason why we have it or you got it is because God put it in us when we didn't even know who we are. We didn't know who we really were. Like we just wake up and try and exist. 
And God is like, no, 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 no. You can come in like that, but you ain't going to stay that way. Like there's only one you. There's literally only one you. And I was like, so what are you saying? And he said, well, number one, as long as the fact is that I've always been around, that means there's always victory in your realm or your reach. That's crazy. That's crazy. Think about it. Hey, what's going on? Welcome, welcome to the session, Bible Beast. My, what's happening? Uh, oh, great. So I was talking to a friend of mine this week, and he said, and we were both going through some really tough times this week. And he said, man, Fred, I just, I don't know outside the cliche God's got me that he really has me. And so we prayed and we said, uh, God, you're going to have to show us something practical. And this is what he did. He said, okay, let me show you how, 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 how factual my statement is that I got you and I've had you. And every time you consider being had, it doesn't have to be had, had it by evil and wrong things. It can always be good things. So I said, okay, what, what do you mean, God? He said, think about it. Every time you wake up, literally every time you wake up, you have a new opportunity to experience a win. The minute you open your eyes, you have a declared win before you even begin your day. And I said, what do you mean? He said, because he said, before I, before I even started your day, I figured your day out. And I'm like, what do you mean? Well, I gave you breath, so you had to get up. I gave you a mind, so you automatically have an opportunity to think. Um, I provided different things so that you can run into different resources so that you can go, huh, I think I might want to do this today. No, I think I'm going to wait here. And then I gave you the Holy Spirit. So when you get ready to do something, we have the choice to say, you know what? God, should I do this today? Should I go there right now? And all of that God did before we even was created. Second thing God says is, hey, I love this one. I'm going to read this one. I like this piece. Oh, God, this one. It says, God's love for you and I it literally expands and extends beyond our moment of struggle. Beyond any issue that we're going through. How do you know that? Nah, man, I'm catching it, but you're not dead. Well, I don't have this right now. Well, maybe I just, well, maybe not. Maybe not. And if you can say maybe not, then you can say, I shall not, or it will not. Because we're dealing with someone who's much bigger than I. So, so let me, let me, I'm going to paint this picture. I want to paint this picture. You guys, you got something for me today? You got something for me today? Okay. All right. We'll, we'll get in. All right. Bet that. So paint the picture. God is creating this thing. He's going to, I'm going to create this little situation. Oh. And the thing about it is when he's creating, you don't know what he's doing. Like you take a sheet of paper, take a sheet of paper, just like this, and you start writing on it. And what God says, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to write down everything that you desire. The devil wants us not to. Our past is really pulling on us, saying, man, you're not worth it. Sis, you're not worth it. You went through this. You can't handle that. And God is like, just write it down, bro. Just write it down. Talk to me. And we go, well, I did, too, I did something wrong. I didn't ask you about the wrong, bro. I didn't, I'm telling you, I, I'm going to have a conversation with you. Jeremiah 31 verse 3 says, I read it from the top of the jump. He says, listen, I got an everlasting love for you. Why? Because he literally created us. And he says, I'm going to help you get through this. So the burden of proof is on God. 
Y'all hear what I'm saying? The burden of proof is on God because he said, I can deliver you from anything. He said, I got you. I can take care of this. I can take care of that. I can take care of that. What we have to do is be willing to love him enough to let him do it. See, we're making this thing deep. We ain't got to make it deep. We don't have to make it deep. It's like if, if my mom says to me, Fred, come and pick this $50 up. I got it for you. And then I get on the phone. I hang up with the phone with her. And then I get back on the phone and I'd be like, well, mom, don't, don't you need that money? Or I don't want to take your last. I don't. Mom said, I got something for you. Come pick it up. I have to make a decision, a choice. I got to be willing to say, man, my mom blessed me with this because she loves me. One. Two, she knows or she may think I have a need or she just may want to do something extra special for me that I was no, I was not aware of. That's what God does. He says, listen, you got this because I got it. Hands down. You need money? I got it. You need great friendships that are wholesome and healthy? I got it. You need to come out of this addictive situation lifestyle? I got it. And what's cool is he just says it. I got it. He didn't say, well, I got it because I'm this and I'm that. He says, you already know who I am. I got it. We go, so, well, tell us a little bit more about how good you are, God. Tell us how, how what did you do last, what you do for so, no, 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 no. I got your situation. And when we stop looking outside at everyone else's situation and say, listen, this is my situation. I need help. This is my situation. I want you to help my brother. And God, all God wants is that time. Think about it. How much time are you communicating with God? Like how much time are you saying, listen, I'm going to start my day talking to you. When it get a little tough, I'm going to have a conversation. You good with that? God's like, I got it. I'm with it. Let's do this. Third thing. God only gives you and I the best. Now, here's what's interesting about the best. It's not our best. It's his best. I don't, I don't, I don't know if y'all getting this. I say, well, Lord, I, I, I need hundred thousand dollars to make it god knows wisdom that you don't need a hundred thousand you just need twenty thousand in good investments so god gives you twenty thousand dollar deal instead of a hundred thousand you duplicate it for hundred fold forty fold twenty fold and you make more than a hundred thousand you end up with a million it's his best that he gives us i want to read this one and this is what's crazy if you have ever been in a dark place, I have. I have been in a very dark place. And I still got some help from some very evil people. Hear me. Have you ever been in a situation where you were in dire straits? You didn't want to fool with this person. But you had to ask somebody and you asked them and they helped you. And they were no good. There was nothing good about that individual except he had or she had what you needed. And they helped you and they still ain't right. The Bible says in Matthew 7, 11, Jesus said, listen, if, if, if you and I being evil can give somebody a good gift to get them through, how much more than can I, God, Don't you realize I know what you need and want before the very foundation, before you were born. He knew that you were going to be Fred. He knew you wanted to do this. He knew that. And he knew one day you're going to do this. And he, that God. So the point is, when God gives us what we call our best, it's really his best. So when we're asking him, you guys are like, Lord, like this is what I want. 
this is what I believe I need. But can you give me what you know is the best? Sometimes we just aren't asking the right questions. And so we may ask the wrong question about something that we want or need. And the devil said, I told you, he, the God ain't going to come through. He ain't come through yet. You ain't got that yet. I don't know why it's taking you so long to get your hair right. And God is like, I need you. It's taking time so you can appreciate it. Appreciate it. When someone gives you a gift and it's so unexpected or you know you were at the bottom, you didn't have anything else and somebody bless you. Today, I, this week I got blessed. There was no way I can get things done. I'm telling you in a very dark place. Some of you all in some dark place, you don't know where you're going to be living. You don't know how, where your next money's coming from. Talk to God about it. Say, God, I don't know how this is getting paid. I don't know where we're going next. I know I want to do right. I know I want to live right. But it's a struggle. Give God a chance to be God in those darkest moments. Give him a chance. Like, I'm not trying to be deep today because it's no, it's, you don't have to be deep with God. See, we, we get all of these theologies, all of this, all of that, all of, come on, man. He's saying, before, I, before you even ask, I already know what you're going to ask me. I just want the courtesy of you asking me. It's a courtesy to open the door for someone. You don't have to do nothing. But the minute you open the door, oh, thank you. No problem, ma'am. That is so nice. Results. You know what, young man? I, I, it seemed, I thought Shivery was dead. Nope. It's a choice. God is saying to you, you have this because I already have it. You got this. I got it. So you got it. Then he says, you, you got it because I've always had it and I want to give it to you. Not to your buddy. Not to everybody you see on TV, on all the national platforms. No, I want to give it to you. Let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. All right, two more points and then we'll let you go. But I just think it's important because, you know, I was spending with them some time with the Lord. Like, I don't I don't know how we're doing this. And then my buddies were saying the same thing. Like, man, it just seems like the wicked, they get away with everything. And I was like, no. It's a fast track to a quick end. And today, I, this week, I had to go to two funerals. Fast living. They're not here. People want to celebrate the dead. And God is like, I'm alive. What you want? What you need? How are we doing this? Talk to me. Number three. God allows all of these things, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, to happen to us. To show us that these areas in our life that are lacking are areas where God is giving us permission to grow our faith. Okay, now I know that sounds beat. All right, so let me explain. When you need internet, you catching some crazy, crazy, crazy stuff in your life. It's just, it's not making any sense. Why, uh, bill after bill, situation after situation, um, heartache, whatever, whatever. And God is saying, these are lessons that need to be learned so that you can extend more of your confidence or your trust. In me. I don't know how this is going to be paid. I can worry. Or I can say, God, I need you. Here's what's happening. Our faith is extended to another level, which means he's given us permission to grow instead of stay. If we don't grow, we complain. If we don't grow, we stop becoming impactful. Listen to what I'm saying. God is saying, I'm going to grow you by stretching you out of your comfort zone. Well, I thought all I had to do is, no, that's how you started. That's not how you're going to finish. 
you don't get a degree in, in economics and engineering by stopping in your second year of studies. And so God has given us five points. I want to leave you with these five because this is the deal. You got it because he is giving you permission to grow. Last time we talked about it because you had three amazing allies, God, the Holy Spirit, and you, yourself, your brother, your sister. No one could do it like we do it. So here we go. Ways to know that you can make it. And it's all centered around understanding that God loves you. Number one, God says you can do it because he only created winners. That's all. He never created you to lose, catch a L. He never created you for that. You're, you were designed for greatness. Psalms 139 says, he knew you before, he knows what you need, and he tightly knit you and I with him so that we can be great. The minute we stop choosing to be great is the minute we withdraw our connection. Number two, the reason why you got it and I have it and we have it is because Christ died so that we can get it. And he got up. So he went through what we went through in principle and, and some physical, those different issues and died and went to a grave and had to wait for the father to say, yo, you can come now. I give you an answer. Jesus had to wait. So if he had to wait just to be declared a winner, sometimes we got to be a little patient. Like we really have to be patient. And it's in the patience that we grow in strength, in stamina, meaning I can handle the pressure. And it's in the time of patience or waiting. It's a waiting faith because you, what you're saying and what I'm saying is it don't matter how long it takes. I serve a winner. I run with a winner. I don't run with losers. I don't run with people that are back and forth and tripping. And in the waiting, you'll find out who's your true friends. You'll find out how close you are to what you're saying you are in God. I woke up this week and I was like, Lord, I thought I was stronger. He said, no problem. You weren't. But come on, let's do some work. And he took me to Hebrews. Hebrews 12, where he said, now here are a cloud of witnesses. Abraham, he was a liar but he made it. Rahab was on the corners. She made it. Jacob, he was tripping with between two wives and then he didn't want to do what he needed to do. He made it. And he went down the list and he said, there's no excuse for you not to make it, Fred. There's no excuse unless we make one. That's what he told me this week. He said, so, Fred, are you going to make the excuse because it's a reality in the moment? Or are you going to say, okay, at this moment, I've got to wait. At this moment, this is what's happening. At this moment, I don't know how it's going to work out. However, instead of but, however, and that's the new thing I'm doing. However, it will get better. However, I'm going to talk to the Lord about it. However, I'm going to talk to the person that I'm indebted to. However, however, however. And however means in, it says I'm here but I will not be here forever, okay? Number three, God demonstrates his love in a very unique way. He allows us to be in situations, hear me well, where we have to stretch out to him. We're used to people coming to us. I got a title, I have a salary, I have people that work underneath me, subordinates. You come to me if you want some. Lord is like, if you're heavy laden, come to me. So he's teaching us how to be humble in the most vulnerable moments. If we can be humble in the most vulnerable moments, when we have nothing to offer anybody, oh my goodness. What's going to happen in the moments when he knows we got it? Hands down. 
Number four, he says, you got to pick up my book. You got to spend some time in the word of God. Even if that's just every day, I, like I, what I recommend is in the book of Psalms, the Psalms, David got some of the dopest chapters in the Bible and the dopest books in the Bible, really, because David was going through it. Some days David was just slaying. He was a king. He was doing well. Other days he was tripping. His son Solomon was the wisest man, made the most stupidest situa- choices, and then he still bounced back. So if you're in a situation where you're like, man, I did, that was just dumb. I shouldn't have. Okay, you need to go to hang out with Solomon a little bit. Man, I don't know how to handle this. Go talk to David. Sisters, go talk to Esther. Jeremiah, the dude was crying all the day, all the time, because all of his homies in the church and out was just messing up. And the biggest, the biggest test for Jeremiah, God said, do you want to win, Jeremiah? I ain't talking about the children of Israel. Do you want to win? Well, we just keep falling. We keep, no, no, I get it. Do you want? What do you want? Sometimes we get in a situation where we're trying to save the world, and God is like, what do you want? You've been rocking with me all this time. What do you want? Tell me what the desires of your hearts are. Tell me what you really need, Fred. Say, well, tell me what you need, Professor. Tell me what you need. Well, if you, no, not if, what do you need? We second guess God in our asking. And that was what I, the biggest thing I learned this week in this little message was ask God in confidence. Ask him in confidence. Just ask him. Let him say no. Let him say yes. Let him say, I got you. However, I need you to trust me in this area. And I'm telling you, it's mind-blowing because it's in those moments that God says to you and to me and to us, I'm telling you, I'm God. I know the end from the beginning. In fact, I know how this is going to end in your situation, though you're right here in the moment. All right. And then I want to leave this one with you, this last, uh, yeah, this last point, uh, two points. Um, here's the other reason why, and I, and I didn't get it until Thursday, and I was doing a little, little reading Thursday night, um, and I went to bed early. Holy Spirit woke up and said, woke me up and said, hey, I need you to talk. Hey, hey, we got to talk. We got to talk. I was like, what? It's 3.30 in the morning. Jeez. <laughs> so I got up. And he took me to Exodus 20, f- verse 5 and 6. I'm like, you got to be kidding. I know this. That's where the Ten Commandments is, Lord. I already know this. I, you know, I had to learn this from growing up. He said, read it. And I read it. It said, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them or anyone, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of, unto the third and fourth generation, of them that really don't serve me and in fact they hate me and showing mercy to thousands of them that really do love me and keep my commandments so i so i sat up and i was like so what's what what do you want me to write he said tell the folk this saturday that they have it because i am jealous of anybody else taking my spot I said, what? And I sat back in my recliner and was like, oh, Sam. God is jealous of anybody else trying to take first place. Bottom line, you will always have it if you run with the number one man, God. The minute you say, or we say, or they say, the minute we choose some other process of getting things done, learning new things that are healthy, wholesome, and happy. Listen, God ain't playing. If God can create the world with just just thinking, speaking, and, and moving and breathing, you think he's going to give room for the devil or or any negativeness? 
he's not taking second place. So I don't know if you got any of the message today, but I want you to get this. You got it because not only God has always had it, but he's going to keep it. So the question is, what side are you on? I pray that you have made a decision in your moment to moment living that, listen, God, I'm going to only have it because of you. If God is the greatest ally that you and I can have, then he is a jealous God. And he said, listen, I will go and visit these iniquity, these fools. I will go and handle it. You know what I'm saying? I will handle it. They say you can't do this. Don't worry about that. I got that. And I, that just, I, I almost had a holy dance in my, my living room. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, okay. So what you're saying is, he said, I said it. I got it. I've always had it. And I have it to give you. Do you believe? Are you willing to take the risk on an invisible, jealous God? I said, yeah. I said, yes, sir. He said, then you're going to have to spend time with me. That means you got to get up in the morning. That means whenever you roll out your bed, you got to talk to me first. Me first. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. When you got to, when you want to get in a good book and get you a good novel in, I need you to get mine first. Get mine first. Then you can get in all the other great novels. But I need you to get in this one first. Ha! So jealous. He is so jealous. Like, and I get it. I get it. Like, if you have someone in your life, or if you're married, or if you have a child in your life and you're not married, and you know you, and you know how a mother has mother's love for their kids, you can't break that up, even if you're the husband. You can't do it. Because <laughs> she's like, oh, wait, wait, this came out my womb. We ain't playing with this. Now, she may have to make some decisions, but God is like, listen, I created you. Don't tell me what I don't know. I know you inside and out. Not only do I know you inside out, but I know what makes you tick. I know what causes you to fall. I know what makes you happy. So I need you to know how jealous I am of our time, our relationship, and the things that you desire. So I need you to understand that. Last week we talked about it. Why do you have it? Because God's got it. And he's the creator of always having it. Two, because he's given us the Holy Ghost to help us. And three, because he created us to always have dominion, have it. And the, today, the reason why you got it is because you rock with a jealous but a real God. So the minute you make somebody else your God by your choices and those things, then you forfeit the, the blessings and the opportunity to grow. You know what I'm saying? So I just want you to understand, like, don't forfeit those blessings. Steve, Har Steve Harvey did that on his show. He said, listen, he was... He said he was at the gate. He was talking to Peter and Peter said, oh, come on in. We're going to go see Jesus. He was on his way to see the king and he walked by it. It had this door and it had his name on it and it had blessings. And he was like, hey, Gabriel, what's going on with this, bro? Why's my name on there? He said, well, you made it to heaven, but this is what he was trying to give you when you was on earth. I was like, yo, imagine what God's trying to give you here. What's bound there is bound here. He's jealous. He wants your time. He wants to spend time. He wants you to get in his book. He wants you to love on people, starting with him first, your family second. And you know what? No, let me double back. Loving God first, love yourself second, and then love your family third. Because you can't love people if you don't understand who you are. And you, don't even, you won't understand who you are until you understand who God is. So get God in your life, then you'll enjoy being you. I love being me because I know he loves me and I know they got me. And if they got me, I got me and I got you. So there it is. You got it. Get God first. Let God get you. Then you can get yourself and then you can help some other, other people get it. That's it. That's really what it is. That is it. God's, you got it because God has always had it.
So I hope you're getting it. I hope this was I hope this was really it was a little we had a little slow start, but I had to kind of educate you on what's going on because this is what he did for me all week. So I'm sorry if it was a little long, but I need you to get it because it's yours. It's yours. Now, every week we do this thing is called God's Mailbox. Remember I talked earlier about that? It's simple. You can do it at home if you're not here. The ones who are here in the studio. And we'll do a little song freestyle. Write down your prayers, your thoughts. God, this is what I need. This I want to I wanna be that guy, that young lady, that young man, that boy, that girl to get it. I need it. Write it down. Then there's an envelope. Put it in an envelope. Don't don't mail it to no. I mean, if you want to mail, we'll burn it. But I mean, you can just put it in the envelope and then throw it away and watch God do it. So that's what it is. Let me pray real quick. Uh, well, no, let's play some music, man. I've been talking a lot, uh, but I just this one was heavy for me because I saw him work a miracle, three miracles, literally. When I stopped tripping, he hooked up one of my my boys, like for real, and he really blessed me this week to make it to see you today. So I'm really full um, and grateful. So let's play this music. Let's do this music. Write your prayers to God. Let the instrumental play. We got a uh, uh, Kelly. You go. You you got something for us today? Okay, it's cool. So we'll figure it out. Enjoy the music. Yeah. So if you have in the studio, if you want to go ahead and drop your uh, love letter to the Lord or your conversation, you can do so at this time. And then um, we're going to take you out with a couple of video, music videos. Uh, don't forget. Um, yes, yeah, right here. Right here. Okay, so I'm going to drop mine. Let me just pray real quick, and then we're going to get in. So, Lord, we want to say thanks again for letting us know that you really have us. Thank you for um, assuring us that, uh, listen, you love us that much, and that your love is truly everlasting and unconditional. Uh, Bless us to really embrace that. Bless us to do what we need to do in choosing you, and we'll be sure to give you the honor and praise. and Blow our minds, Lord. Just blow our minds. Show us how much you are. And thank you. We really want to say thank you for being jealous, because if you wouldn't, you wouldn't really care. So we thank you for being a jealous God who really loves us. In the Christ's name, Yahshua, amen. So I hope this was a blessing. It was a little different from last week's. But uh, just know that you you have a best friend who's a jealous best friend. He's serious about you. And he wants to see the best for you. Now, don't forget, uh, after tonight around 9 o'clock, 9 p.m., you already know we're going to throw up a few of the announcements on here. Uh, we have the DJ Sizzahan Radio. I'm going to say a big shout out to all of our, our special guests um, that come through and all our studio guests too. Don't forget tonight, 9 p.m., D 
DJ Scissorhand Radio. He baptizes in beats, bro. You're going to love it. G93, you can download the app, G93 Radio. It's all day, every day. And there, there it is. You got it right there. And then also on Sunday, we kick it off at G93 at 5 p.m. No more dirty radio show. That's the whole crew. That's all of us, right? And then at 6 o'clock, we're on at We Up 103.1. So 5 o'clock, G93, 6 o'clock, um, also there. And then I'm going to ask, uh, just throw the screen up so they can see where we are located again. If you want to support, if it's this ministry, this organization is really being a blessing to you, I want you to make sure that you take the time um, to uh, go to our cash app, No More Dirty INC. There it is. You can't miss it. Is right there, but this is where we are every uh, Saturday throughout the week, actually. But um, we do our studio, our TV show, and all that good stuff. But if you want to be a blessing, uh, pull up the TV show too every Friday. So we do the Friday show. It's on 7:30 p.m. on we uh, on um No More Dirty TV, and we do that. You can go to our YouTube channel as well. So at the end of the day, it's all good. No More Dirty org. You can find out more. There it is. The No More Dirty TV show. Every Friday night, enjoy it. The best of the hottest videos that are clean, Christian, and also inspirational. Um, and you're going to love the next two shows. And shout out to Flavor Fest for all of the good interviews. We'll keep throwing those in just so you can get it and go to our website where you can learn about what we're about. And you can get involved. You can invest. You can volunteer. And you can share. So that's what it is. I'm your host, Minister Fred, too. I want to say thanks again for taking the time to be with us. Um, we will see you again. Don't forget, we will have the replay for this sir, this uh, the session, Bible Beast and Bar, on Monday, 7.30 p.m. on our YouTube channel. So make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll get back with you next week. So enjoy yourself, and thanks again. Blessings. Stay warm out there. Right up where the Crips be, yeah, yeah. We play double that, double that. They come through and we double back, double back. Easy always finding where the trouble's at. Cracking Took some on. losses, I got partners who ain't coming back. They now I'm tired praying for a better way. Right. And I hear the voice of the Lord say, Forgive your enemy. For if you forgive others their offenses, your Heavenly Father will forgive you as well. If you don't forgive others, your father will not forgive your offenses. Praying for God to make a way. Then I hear the voice of the Lord say, Pray for your enemies. I mean, that's a hard pill to swallow. You know what I'm saying? Because, because it's been bloodshed. Mm. Asking God to forgive my sins. Then I hear the voice of the Lord say, Forgive your enemies. But what you feel like the sin against the Holy God is worse than any sin that anybody can do. Give me a little Y'all been beefing for years, I get it. But I know you sick and tired if you really admit it. There gon' come a time when you need to forgive me. Asking God for it, but you ain't willing to give it. 
And I know how you feeling, but we gotta come together, man. The hood need a healing. We was all street villains. Now we bearing our children. They warn outside. Poor core press, man, they scoring outside. Heavy with them long poles blowing outside. If you ain't with the smoke, don't be going outside. Yeah, you did it too. They ain't did it back, now you feel it too. They need forgiveness too. God said forgive, cause I'm forgiving you. Man, you forgot to make a way. Then I hear the voice of the Lord say, Pray for your enemies. They hear it. Y'all hit back. Then you got the cycle of murder that's going on in your neighborhood. But who's the real enemy? I'm asking God to forgive my sins. Then I hear the voice of the Lord say, Forgive your enemies. Then we finally realize it's the same one that caused us pain. It's the same one that caused them pain. And that's the true enemy.